Hi, this is Brian Lazar with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center and welcome to your weekly Avalanche Outlook. Before we take a look at what's coming in the next several days, I wanted a quick recap of what happened last week. We had a very uh, stark transition to spring-like conditions, very warm temperatures, ample sunshine. We pumped prodigious amounts of water into the snowpack and we saw a lot of wet avalanche activity. If you look at our avalanche explorer tool here, you'll see that the peak of the avalanche activity took place right over the weekend. And since then it's been declining as colder temperatures are moving in. So these images illustrate the kinds of avalanche activity we saw. It was a mix of wet slab avalanches like this one from near Monarch Pass, uh, wet slab avalanches near Aspen, and even down into the North San Juan. So this is when those weak layers get wet for the first time. So we saw a lot of wet slabs take place on east through south through west facing slopes, particularly at the lower elevations. And of course, we saw also a mix of some of these loose wet avalanches. So starting on Monday night, we had a little storm system rolled through and this brought some decent snowfall amounts to most mountain areas. We had anywhere from about five to 10 inches in the Northern and Central mountains. And then down in the southern mountains, the San Juans picked up as much as 16 inches at the higher elevations around Colbank Pass. So this is this new snow has added a new layer to our very complicated snowpack, as this image from down near Ophir, Colorado illustrates. Um, we just as recently as kind of Tuesday and into Wednesday, we're starting to see avalanches in this fresh storm snow. You can expect these conditions to last uh, from Thursday and into the weekend. Here are some examples of what these uh, storm snow avalanches are gonna look like for the next several days. So as this model run shows, you can see we've got some active weather that's coming through Thursday and through the weekend. There are lulls here and there, but you can see that we get you know a few inches of snow in a lot of these 12 hour periods moving into early next week. This is gonna continue to add fuel for these storm snow instabilities. And what's most worrisome are any avalanches in the storm snow can then step down into those weak layers now buried about two to four feet deep in the snowpack, particularly on those northerly facing slopes. You can still trigger avalanches from a distance or from below. And what this little bits of storm snow over the next several days is gonna do is just incrementally load those weak layers make them a little bit easier for people to trigger. This video demonstrates a snowpack test and shows that this uh, weak layer is still a concern for us across most mountain regions. Hey everyone, Dylan here with the Colorado Avalanche Information Center. I'm here in the Aspen zone on a north facing aspect near the tree line, and I'm still finding a fairly wintry snowpack with that persistent weak layer buried a little under a meter below the snow surface. And so even after that warm period, we can see we're still dealing with a persistent weak layer and we're still dealing with a persistent slab avalanche problem on northerly slopes. So why don't we do a snowpack test here and see what kind of results we get. So as you can see, I got a propagating failure to cross the column and it failed on that extended dry spell facet layer we had buried a little under a meter deep. And really what this is showing us is even after that warm period, and even though it may feel like spring these days, we're still dealing with a persistent slab avalanche problem on northerly aspects, especially near and above the tree line. So as that video demonstrates, our weak layers are healing. It's taking a little bit more force to get them to fail. But if you do, you're gonna trigger large and very destructive avalanches. We still have a more winter-like snowpack on those northerly facing slopes. So steep northerly facing terrain near and above tree line are the most dangerous slopes as we move into the end of this work week through the weekend and into early next week. Remember, you can still trigger avalanches from a long ways away or even from the flats below steep slopes. So as you move around steep northerly facing terrain, make sure you give yourself very wide buffers. This is springtime in Colorado. We oscillate between wet avalanche concerns and cold dry snow avalanche concerns. We're into the cold dry variety for the next several days. Um, please make sure you stay on top of current conditions by getting your local forecast at colorado.gov avalanche or on the CAIC mobile app. Stay safe out there and we'll see everyone back here next week.